Um, the first thing I'll say is, overall, um, this was your best done section, so good for you, okay? Um, however, the devil was in the details, I think, with this, this question, with this topic, right? So it started off fairly gentle. Um, you notice we always supply you what the substitution should be, okay? So you should take that cue and go ahead, do your substitution, but you know, make sure you do that properly and know what your derivative is and how to pop that back into your integral, okay? So for parts A and B, I thought that was okay. In fact, I thought part B was extremely generous because as extension one students, I reckon I should be able to hand you that question without a substitution and you be able to work it out. Because if you have a look, this is in the form, once you do a slight rearrangement to it on it, this is in the form F dash on F, right? Um, two unit students, as two unit students, we know what the derivative of log is, that's f dash on f, so we ought to be able to recognize that one by now. But we were really handing that to you, we really want you to get that question, okay? So parts A and B were fine. Part C was where the wheels started to fall off. So um, here's what our answer looks like. You can see, whoops, sorry. You can see you've got to do more work because what kind of integral is part C? It's it's definite, it has boundaries, which means you have to change those boundaries as well. When you change everything from x's into u's, you've got to change the boundaries into u's as well. So you can see there's, it's not much work, we've given you nice exact values. Don't forget, you are performing calculus on this, so that's why my angles come out as, as radians, right? They're not in degrees, so just make sure you note that, okay? Once you got that there, this was a really nice straightforward integral, so that was okay. The most problems were with the boundaries, okay? But when we have a look at part D, um, this, is, this is where we had some substantial trouble. Now, let me, let me walk through this carefully, okay? Now, I'm just going to come out right the gate here and say you kind of got lucky on this one because there is a big curveball right in the middle of this question, but it just so happened that we didn't really put that many marks on this. It was three marks, um, and so if you missed the curveball, which... 95% of people did, uh, we kind of let it go because you still came up with the right answer. But let me explain, you'll see the curveball as we go through. Okay. So here's where we begin. You have to uh, change this from x's into u's, and I think most of you knew how to use the substitution to change all of this business. Okay, so that was fine. You can see me doing it over here on the right hand side. Um, you also notice you could make u the subject, you're used to finding out what du on dx is because u is the substitution, but in this case it's actually easier to calculate dx on du. Do you see that? Because you don't need to have any square root of x plus 2 flying around, no plus or minus to deal with. Okay? So that was not too bad. Okay? Um, we had a few issues changing the 3x plus 5. A lot of us kind of looked at that and thought, oh, how? Ooh, that doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like. Well, as you can see, in order to try and get it close to 3x plus 5, doesn't require too much adjustment. I multiplied the substitution they gave us, I multiplied it by 3 on both sides. I noticed they, that gives me a plus 6, not a plus 5, so I subtracted 1 on both ends. Okay? So this is what you should have gotten, and you can see that coming in over there on the left-hand side. Okay? Now here's where the major curveball came in, and you just got lucky. Okay? When you go and have a look at your new boundaries, let me squeeze in over here. Here's me working out what my boundaries were and what they will become, okay? Now, because you start from negative 1 and 2, you pop that into where x is, but because the substitution you've been given is u squared, u squared, well, each of the x boundaries has two possible u boundaries that come with it, right? Because you're solving for u squared, plus minus 1 are both solutions. Um, same thing over here when you solve for u squared equals 4. So this plus minus here, um, a significant number of you noticed it, and then artfully ignored it. Now you kind of got lucky here because if you did what most people did and just took the positive value, as you'll see in a second, it comes out in the wash, okay? But I will show you actually what you should have done to get full full marks and you just got lucky. So let's have a look over here. Um, don't worry about this for a second, we'll come to it. Let's look at the positive case. This is what the vast majority of you did who got full marks and this would have been fine, okay? When you pop in your new boundaries for u instead of x, this is not negative 1, it's just 1. So that looks good. You change all of this. Now, most of you just put in u there, okay? Because what's on this denominator? It's the square root, have a look at your original question, of u squared. Now, the square root of u squared often is just u. But it isn't always, is it? And I'll come back to that isn't always in a minute. However, if you did this, you can see uh, the u's will cancel. That 2 comes out the front, so you don't need to worry about it. 3u squared, you know what to integrate into that too. An alarming number of you kind of forgot to integrate this guy, all right? That's why the brackets are kind of helpful. It reminds you you're doing the whole thing. It's part of the integrand. 
and then you sub your values in, you evaluate, you get 12, okay? So that's fine, good for you, okay? However, let me rewind up here. X plus 2 is u squared, right? So when you pop it into u squared here and you have the square root of u squared, what you really should put is not u, but the absolute value of u. This is in fact one of the definitions of the absolute value of whatever. It's the square root of the square, okay? So this is really what you're supposed to do. But if there's an absolute value sign there, right? We know that absolute values are equal to do different things depending on what's inside the absolute value, depending on what values of u you put in. Okay, so in fact you can't just go ahead and cancel these guys because they're not the same. One's an absolute value and one is not. Okay, you have to decide is this going to be plus u or is it going to be minus u. Okay, now if you did what most of you did and just said well I'm going to take the positive values for the boundary, the positive values of u, the absolute value of a positive number is just that number. Right, the absolute value of u will just be u. Okay, but if you said, how do I know I've got to take those, those boundaries and not these other ones? If you looked at this and said, well, what do I do with these negative values? If you're looking at negative values for you, for your boundaries, and you're going to substitute them into here, the absolute value is not just u. It's negative u. So you might like to write down for yourself, sorry, the absolute value of u is equal to, it's this, um, it's this Jekyll and Hyde thing, right, that changes what it is depending on what you put in. So it is u if u is positive, it is negative u if u is negative, okay? So missing this, you guys kind of got lucky if you just kind of ignored it. Three marks is not enough for us to deal with this. You can see how much work results from dealing with both cases. But this is what you would have done if you wanted to do it properly. Um, you'll notice that my u and my negative u have cancelled, leaving me with a negative sign. I could just leave that in all the way and then evaluate, but instead I used one of my properties of definite integrals. Do you remember this? If you've got a negative sign at the front of a definite integral, you can switch the boundaries from A to B to B to A. Do you remember that? It was a while ago now that we learned this property of definite integrals. So I've done that in my working. You can see it all still comes out in the wash. We still get the 12 that you would have got if you did it the normal way. Um, but this is something which you have to, it's a, it's a very sneaky question to sneak in there, okay? But that's what it is, all right? Um, it's worth noting that anyone who lost marks on this question, which is a fair number of you, um, tended to lose it anyway without any of this absolute value business in here, but you should, should still know about it, okay? That's all the question one. Does anyone have any integration by substitution questions? Right, turn to the next, oh yeah, Declan, question? So basically for B and C, mm -hmm. um, you know how it says like, oh, yeah, the integral. So, and then um, I lost part for putting u squared uh, when you finish with mm -hmm. the answer. Mm -hmm. So when you put like u squared in? That's a great question. Okay, so just in case you didn't qu catch what Declan said, right? Um, he, he, he lost marks, he didn't receive marks because he put, uh, well, it'd be here, wouldn't it? Someone like here? Okay. All right. Now. What's going on? Why, why is it bad to put u squared here? Okay? As, in, as in all questions, you have to read the wording carefully. What is it they're actually asking us to do? Right? Now when you have a look at, in fact, all four parts here, um, they say, what are the verbs? There are two verbs they use. They use either find or evaluate. Right? Now in those cases, what you're looking for is a value of something. Right? That's in fact what evaluate means and find is just a synonym for that. Okay? In no case for any of these particular questions have we ever said it has anything to do with what are our other common uses for integrals? Area or volume, right? So it hasn't said it's an area, hasn't said it's a volume. So it would be a little bit like me saying, you know, if I asked you, if you asked me, uh, you know, how many, how many donuts have you eaten today? And I said, five centimeters. You'd be like, I don't think you understand the question, right? Um, I may well have eaten five donuts, but the way I've answered that question shows you, I've, I've missed what you were actually kind of talking about. Um, and five centimeters worth of donuts would be really sad anyway. So anyway, that's why the units do matter. So little thing.